In this video, let's start to prove that the instrumental variable is the same as a two-step least squares model. So it's literally going to be a model where we have two regression lines. Why is that? Because recall, we said that the instrumental variable must affect the independent variable first. So that's going to be our first step in the model. And eventually, this variable that we're going to regress is going to affect the outcome variable. It's going to affect y. And in this way, we isolate the variation that happens in the outcome, in the dependent variable, due to the omitted variables so that our coefficient becomes unbiased. Okay, so let's do so. Since there are two steps, let's start with step one. What's going to be first? We're going to regress the independent variable due to the instrumental variable. So we will have, we will have x that we are regressing, right? It's a sample data. Uh, based on a constant, let's call it delta zero because we'll keep alpha for later, for later, plus delta one, which is going to be the slope coefficient in this case, times z. Z is the, uh, the instrumental variable. Now with this, with this uh, regressor, x that we just used, in the second step, we're going to regress the dependent variable, which is going to be based on a constant alpha plus beta times the, times the independent variable that we just regressed, x. Okay, now what are we trying to prove in this video is that the slope coefficient beta is going to be the same slope coefficient that we proved previously. Mainly, it's going to be this ratio of the covariances. Because what we're trying to show is that the beta of the instrumental variable that we showed, that we proved, is the same as the beta of the two-step least squares model. So, first things first, let's see what we can do with the first regression line. Let's write the population regression line mainly that means that we're going to include the error term because remember, across the entire population, we're always going to have some error terms that we cannot uh, measure. So we have to keep that in mind. And we do so for the sake of math. We want to work with the math to see what delta is and then we're going to use it in the next equation as well. Anyway, we're going to do it and you'll see. So x is equal to delta 0 plus delta 1 times the independent variable and we have an unexplained term. Let's call that u. Right, and that's gonna be xi over here, zi and i. This this stays for individual. This this happens for every individual that we can measure. Now, what we're interested in, what is the slope coefficient in this case? Well, that's gonna be delta one. How can we write delta one? Well, delta one is the ratio of the covariance between the dependent variable, which is x in this case, and the independent variable, which is z relative to the variance of z. So relative to the variance of z. Now, if you're uncomfortable with this notation, have a look at my playlist in statistics. I think I have videos from Khan Academy where he derives all the math of this. This is, this is pure math, like um, it's, it's a matter of computation. So have a look at that. Uh, now, with this delta one, right, this is, the, this is the slope coefficient that we're estimating based on this model. We could use it in the second equation because in the second equation, we are having, we are having yi is equal to alpha plus beta, which is the slope coefficient, times the independent variable that we regress. And this hat matters because we are using necessarily from the first step, we're using basically what we find in the first step into our second step. And we're having our error term. We're still writing our error term. And notice that the error terms are different because we're having two different regression lines. That's why we use different notations as well. So what we're trying to prove is that this slope coefficient is going to be the same slope coefficient as in the previous video. So let's do so. The beta under the two-step least squares model is going to be the covariance between, it's going to be the covariance between the dependent variable y and the independent variable x, which we regressed previously, relative to the variance of this regressed value, relative to the variance of x x hat and notice the analogy is the same method you see this is the covariance between the dependent variable and the independent variable same goes here the covariance between the dependent variable and the independent variable that's what we're doing so from here what we're going to do we're going to expand the um, x because we regressed it already this is how we regressed it in the let me just i zoomed out already uh, this is how we regressed it. This is our x. We're going to substitute it over there and going to work out the math. So let's substitute it over there in this video. In the next video, we'll keep going with the math because it's becoming slightly long and we have to stay focused. Now, what we do we have? We will have beta 2 SLS, 2 SLS. That's equal to the covariance between. So that's equal to the covariance between yi. And then let's substitute the independent variable that we regressed, which is which is equal to delta zero hat, right? This is based on sample data, plus delta one times z, that's x, we close the bracket, divided by the variance of x. So let me just change the colors, we will have variance of 
variance of and let's substitute that x again we will have delta 0 hat plus delta 1 hat multiplied with z so what do we notice here we have the covariance we have the covariance between y and delta 0 so over here covariance between y and delta 0 delta 0 is just a constant that's literally the constant from this regression line a constant does not move meaning a constant does not vary meaning that the covariance between these two is going to be 0 so that covariance is going to have a value of 0 and we're left with the covariance between y and delta 1 times z and how can we write this well that's going to be delta 1 that's going to be delta 1 hat times the covariance between y i and z i now, with the same logic, we do it over here below. What do we have? We have a variance. So the variance of delta 0, well, that's a constant again. The constant does not vary. So this variance is going to take the value of 0. We have 1, that's just 0. And then the variance of delta 1 times z, well, we could write it as delta 1 squared, delta 1 hat, right? Estimated based on the sample to the power of 2 times the variance of z. And again, the reason it is delta 1 to the power of 2 is based on some math, which you, which you can find in that playlist. Now, we leave it like that in this video. In the next video, we keep solving the math.